so, so good today. I'm, tonight actually, I'm feeling really, really great. How are you? Good, good. So we're getting ready for the Tulsa Real Estate Fun Launch. We are days away. away. So exciting. It's been a Very. lot of momentum and a lot, a lot of, of work. Yes, a lot of work. <laughs> we have put in so much work. Um, so happy for the team. So proud of the team. So happy to be on the team. I'm ready. Yeah, so tell me, um, about your role as the Chief Communications Officer for Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Yes, well, as a business owner of a full service concierge and personal shopping company, I have worked with over three dozen NFL players mm -hmm. um, over the last few years, being an image consultant, being a personal shopper, and just really taking care of their every needs and communicating with their entire team about their life. So um, I brought those skills and relationships and resources over to the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Um, so I communicate with people daily, constantly. I'm always emailing, I'm always calling. I am setting up meetings. I am bring, bringing in influencers. I am using all of my resources to get all the eyes I can on this fund. And I mean, it's been working because we've been That's getting a lot getting of, a lot of, lot of traction. Of, yes. yeah, a lot of attention, a lot of eyes, a lot of traction. And um, it's a group effort, so I'm, I'm happy. And we have an amazing team of people. And you are the president of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Female president, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's that really, make you feel? it's really amazing and overwhelming at the same time too. I've been, you know, working with Tulsa for like the last two years, so it's been amazing to see it go from just an idea, just an idea, just a thought, <laughs> yeah, to what it is now. And I remember, like, last year, I think it was last year, we went to Vegas, mm -hmm. um, and you know, we were telling people about Tulsa. We hadn't even gotten right. the qualifications <laughs> from the SEC yet. And we were telling people we were going to do like $50 a share. And everybody was like, no, it can't be done. Like, you guys are like crazy. Possible. <laughs> yes. And so just like being able to like leave that moment. And see and, it come to fruition. Yes, and be where we are now and like prove the naysayers. Like, hey, look, we persisted. We stay consistent and yep. look at where we are now. Like, we're actually making this happen. It's just like an amazing thing. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, how does it make you feel as a woman to be in this position of power in this position of just really something that's really historic it's special i i mm -hmm. would say because you know one you don't really see too many women in real estate and then you don't really see too many and women, women of color yes this is mm -hmm. true and um I'm an immigrant too, so mm -hmm. I was born in West Africa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to come from real humble beginnings mm -hmm. to like reach this point. I mean, like, look at where we're Right, like, we're, we're in this beautiful <laughs> home. Like, I, I have to take another tour of this home because it's so amazing. It's amazing. So, just to come from like real humble beginnings to like have this be a reality, like, mm -hmm. I never imagined this for my life. I don't even think <laughs> my parents are my, like, I've always been like driven and determined and hungry and I've always exhibited like leadership skills mm -hmm. but I never I don't think anybody thought it would bring me to like this, this point. point yeah like sitting on this lavish couch no and, and speaking about a 50 million dollar real estate crowdfund <laughs> no or even just you know being responsible for that like you know project managing making mm -hmm. sure we're in compliance like making sure every member of the team is doing what they need to do to like support this vision it's it's a lot but it's worked it <laughs> yeah because the cause and like the mission of it and what we're doing i think is a really beautiful thing and that's what inspired me to really get on board with the tulsa real estate fund absolutely just knowing that we're making a, a difference. difference in like urban communities that really need it mm -hmm. what uh, motivated you to become involved with tulsa uh, real estate fund yeah i mean exactly what you said really just the historic um perspective like i remember walking into jay's office and um we bought the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is the Tulsa Real Estate Fund? He was like, I'm going to rebuild a Black Wall Street. And I said, you know about Black Wall Street? Because I have been obsessed with the story behind Black Wall Street for so long, and I didn't understand why there is this self-sustaining, successful Black-owned town with 36 square blocks of homes and businesses that was booming and thriving, and no one knew about it. It wasn't taught in school, wasn't taught in our curriculum. So when I learned about Tulsa and... Um, Greenwood and uh, the historic district, I was just like, wow, the whole world needs to know about this. So for Jay to say, I want to rebuild the Black Wall Street, I was totally on board. I was like, yes, I'm on board. Let's go. Where are we starting? What do you need from me? Who do you need me to bring in? I am 100% down with the cause because 
We do need another Black Wall Street. We do need to own things as a people. We do yeah. need to be entrepreneurs as a people so we can, you know, we can have a voice and a seat at the table. So and you got to do something most people don't get to do. Like you actually went to historic Tulsa, yes. uh, um, Oklahoma and saw Black Wall Street. Absolutely. So how was that experience for you? I remember landing in Tulsa and immediately like it was a it was a shift mm -hmm. a shift in energy because i was like i'm about to go step foot on some historic soil so walking up to black wall street it's still there the street the original street and you can actually see burned bricks from the original wow. black from the original bombings uh -huh. they took some of the burned bricks and used them to rebuild wow in, in in honor of so to be there was so surreal it was so deep it was so powerful i felt the spirits of the ancestors of O.W. Gurley, of Simon Barry, I felt them. Oh. I, it was weaved in the threads of the streets and to be standing there and, and really just felt like we were carrying the torch. Um, and that's why it's so important for me to be here and, and to let everybody know about it because it's just like, it's something that's just so magical and so, just so surreal, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I saw like the footage that you guys filmed and mm -hmm. it looked like a really amazing and moving and touching experience it and was. just to be on the ground. When I was growing up, I didn't I didn't see a lot of black wealth. So to me, it didn't neither really, did I. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I'm sure you didn't either. i um, being com coming from West Africa, and to see that there was this town that was full of black wealth, full of barbershops, full of banks, schools, libraries, hospitals. To see that we had that, it was almost like something you never seen before. So you didn't think it was real, and then when you see it, you're like, oh wow, this this really exists. So that pushes me to like, hey, we can rebuild this again. And I'm sure, is that how, is that how you feel as well? Yeah, because like my um, cultural background, we've always been big on community and like supporting each other mm -hmm. to, to get to a higher place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's something that's always been in me. So I think it's possible Absolutely. for us to do that. It's just a matter of, you know, us collectively yeah. coming together as a community. And I, and I hope that, you know, people are on board with that. Absolutely. Um, and you're an attorney. Like, how does it feel to be from a small village in West Africa to pass the bar and be an attorney and be an attorney that can contribute all your skill sets to this fund and to this project? It was hard work. So th that, <laughs> that whole experience taught me like hard work and persistence. Cause I was like the first person in my family to get a four year degree. Wow. First person in my family to get like a college degree. And it wasn't like I came from a home where like people could show me. And I think that's one of the things that's important about Tulsa, but um, people could show me like, this is what you do to like get into college. And you know, this is how you fill out an application form. This is how you put together a resume. This right. is how you write a plan. Like I had to figure out all, all that your stuff. own. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's like the beauty of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're talking about building wealth and building the community up and collectively we all have like knowledge and mm -hmm. skill sets that we can bring that we can show people who might not have had yep. access to that information mm -hmm. or that opportunity to do that because you also you know coming from LA pursuing your acting career yeah. you know that's you know a skill set that you had to work hard had for to that work hard for yep and and it's like when you have those skills and you figure out how to use them for good it's like you want to share with everybody and that's why I think is so important with the fund because it's like we made it for everybody it's for everybody a $500 minimum investment like some of us spend that on like nothingness mm -hmm. so I mean to be able to give that back and have everybody involved and be able to take everybody with us it really feels good um yeah it feels really good <laughs> yeah I'm really looking forward to June 1st and just you know setting this milestone for like our community. And I think so tell me why for you June 1st was important. I know we all collectively agreed on June 1st, but like, why was that so like important for you? Well, one, so we agreed to June 1st because of the anniversary of Black Wall Street. And so I think losing something that we had collectively built mm -hmm. as a community, um, that's why June 1st was so important because now we're saying, in tragedy and loss, mm -hmm. you know, some we can rebuild and something resurrecting, and, yes, <laughs> can come out of that. So I think that's why the June first date is so special. What about you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, again, to to, to set, step my foot on the soil in Black Wall Street, and to really just be there and visualize the bombing and see the walls and see the burned bricks for us to do it 
on the anniversary of the bombing, it's just like, what other day could we do it? Like that, it's, it's, it's huge, it's monumental, it's historic, and it's paying homage. A lot of rappers use Black Wall Street in their raps. We hear Black Wall Street all the time, but to be able to say we are genuinely paying homage to this self-sustaining community, to this city, um, that's why it's super important for me. No, I definitely agree with that. And then also, too, I think, you know, even us just having diverse backgrounds, mm -hmm. like, we can show, like, this is attainable for, like, yep. anybody. Anybody. And anybody. I, if you come from a village in West Africa, if you come from Los Angeles, California, if you're an actor, if you're an attorney, if you, you didn't know anything about real estate or investing, and this fund is for anybody. It's a people's fund. And the community, yeah. So yeah. I think that's, like, beautiful. Um, so... We gotta I think, um, what would you say to women who may not be familiar with how crowdfunding works? Okay, so for just anybody in general who's not familiar with how crowdfunding works, mm -hmm. it's the idea of everybody collectively pooling their funds together mm -hmm. to make something, to invest in something, or to make something happen. Yep. And so that's like the premise of this fund is as a community we're collectively going to pull our dollars together and reinvest in yep. our neighborhoods and the real estate in our neighborhoods just to enhance and improve our community so that's like the basis of crowdfunding but that also reminds me of something in creating this fund a lot of people had to take personal and professional risks mm -hmm. um so can you tell me about like a risk that you've taken in your career as an actress Oh man, I grew up in acting. I started acting at 10 years old. Um, started off as an extra on major, major shows in, in, in Hollywood. And I fast forward to college, went to college, was a theater major at UNLV. And someone put a bug in my ear and said, Atlanta's where it's at. If you want to get into acting a little more heavily, Atlanta's where it's at. That's where the film and television industry is moving. Um, at that time, I was making six figures at Neiman Marcus as you know, one of the top sales people at Neiman Marcus. And I said, you know what? I am leaving. I'm packing up my stuff from Vegas. No friends in Atlanta, no family in Atlanta. I am moving to Atlanta to act. I don't know a director out there. I don't know a producer out there. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't have an agent. Mm -hmm. But Steve Harvey said something. He said, the parachute doesn't open until you jump. It does not. And I felt like I'm jumping. I'm jumping because I want the parachute to open and I want to fly and I want to flourish. And I packed all my stuff and moved to Atlanta. That's interesting because um, I had no thoughts of coming to Atlanta like, whatsoever. <laughs> like I had a pretty good life. So how did you get Chicago. here? How did you get to Atlanta? <laughs> like what was your journey? What was the risk that you took? <laughs> Moving to Atlanta was like a big risk that I took because, like you, I knew nobody here, mm -hmm. no friends, no, no family. family. <laughs> um, so you know, I had been working with the fund remotely in Chicago for a year, and then Jay invited me to come down to Atlanta to work more closely and I was I thought about it I prayed on it and it just seemed like a good opportunity but obviously like I said it was a risk because I have a successful business in Chicago my friends are there my support system is there and so I was leaving all of that to come to Atlanta to work on this fund to work on something I believed in mm -hmm. but I think the risk has definitely like paid off I feel like not only in the year have we made significant progress with oh, the fund, yes. <laughs> but I myself personally have grown. grown. <laughs> um, and I, I would say I'm more sharp as a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just more sharp as an entrepreneur. Um, even as a woman, I, I feel like I've really evolved and mm -hmm. walked into that power, walked into that purpose. Yeah. Yep. And that's what we do. Really what we do is purpose work is purpose work and of course it's a business and we all are business minded and you know we make money but for me Tulsa is, is is purposeful and that's why it's so attractive that's why it's so compelling that's why you know we all kind of work so hard at it mm -hmm. yeah I remember when I was young my mom used to always say a woman has two things her reputation and her finances and I didn't quite understand it growing up and now walking into my adulthood and walking into my power and purpose, I realize it is so important for women to have their finances together. You can be pretty, you can have a nice body, you can have this and that and personality and a cute smile. But until you have your finances in order, until you put that piece on, the, on your chessboard, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest pieces on your chessboard is to have your finances together. What would you say to women and, and, and really getting more 
acclimated and comfortable with what, what their financial situation should really be. And so as an attorney who's done like a lot of real estate closings, mm -hmm. I've seen like women who had their finances together, like really elevate like mm -hmm. a whole family. Like you right. have grandmas, moms, aunts that like invested in real estate, like yep. two, three, four different properties. Mm -hmm. And their family is like living off the rental income now. And that wouldn't be possible if these women didn't have their yep. finances together. So for me, I would say it's important for women to be financially savvy mm -hmm. and have their finances together. One, because it can help you uplift your own family. Absolutely. But two, it's like a sense of pride mm -hmm. to know that, you know, it's good to have a partner in life mm -hmm. that you can lean on, but also know that you're able to like take care of yeah, yourself. Care of yourself. It, it, it helps you have more confidence and you just walk a little different. I think the confidence piece is really huge. Like you said, you walk a little different. Your shoulders sit a little higher. Your chest is up a little bit, you know? And that's that's Yeah, because like, I'm a boss queen. Like, <laughs> boss. I can do this, yes. But I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with having support and we should all do that. But I just think there's just something about having, being able to have your own yeah, as well. Take care of your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And, you know, just to piggyback off what you said, that's why, that's why this fund is so important. Because this fund is a, about legacy building. It's about longevity, longevity in your finances. It's about being able to say, I invested in that, I own a piece of that, I'm leaving a piece of that for my great, 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 great grandson, my great, 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 great granddaughter. And that's why this is so special. It's about really sowing the seeds, sowing seeds into this world, leaving a footprint in this world and having something 30, 40, 50 years later to say, yeah, that's mine. Yes, I left that for my family. Yes, I passed that down. And that's why this whole real estate fund is so important. So I totally agree. I yeah. totally agree. So why should people get involved and invest with Tulsa Real Estate Fund on June 1st? June 1st, the Tulsa Real Estate Fund is going live. We are taking our first capital raise. And guess what? The first people who invest, the first 24 hours, that day one of June 1st, you become an honorary founder. We have your name on our website. We may do your name etched in the bricks of our first project. And like I said, this fund is only five, it's a minimum of $500 to get in and to invest. Some of us spend that on nothingness weekly. This fund is important. This fund is about your family. This fund is about your legacy. Yes, and we're all definitely about legacy building here. So even if you can't invest on June 1st and become a founder, you're still free to invest anytime thereafter up until we reach our cap, which is $50 million. But as EJ said, this is really about legacy. This is really about building our community up. And we hope that you'll join us on June 1st to make history and to leave a legacy and to revitalize our communities. Learn more about the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Open up your investor's account today at the Tulsa Real Estate Fund.com. That's T U L S A, Tulsa Real Estate Fund.com. And EJ and I are going to get back to work working hard on the fund, but uh, we look forward to chatting with you again in the future. Bye. Bye. <laughs>